everybody, I want to talk about waffle charts. Traditionally, I have not suggested that people use waffle charts simply because a lot of times people are using conditional formatting to build these in the actual cell grids themselves. I think that is a little inconvenient, it causes lots of issues, it's not very flexible, and so I tried to come up with an alternative, and what I came up with is using a scatter plot. Now it turns out many people have figured this out before me, don't know why it never occurred to me in the first place, but I've tried to do a little bit more uh, in-depth of a dive into this, and I want to just give you some context for how you can do it. It's not too hard. A scatter plot, as many folks know, are just plotting a dot with an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. That's all we're doing. When you plot that dot, you can click into it, go to your marker and change your marker style. So what I've done for all these is used a square shape, 30 point size and given it a fill color. And then I have added a second series of data to the same chart and I've styled that. And just for context, under the chart design tab, you can hit select data and add separate series. That allows you to style them differently. So in this other one, we've done something similar, also a square, also 30 point width and a solid fill that's a darker color. So one of these has a dot for every value zero to 100 with an X, Y coordinate, so they're a grid. And that's all pre-built in here so that folks don't have to go and figure out how to type all that in themselves. We also have the issue of our data needing to be um, normalized as a percentage, right? And this is a common issue I see people have. So a lot of the instructions I've seen on these are just like drop a percentage in there and it magically does it. But instead I wanted to make this a little more flexible. So you can put in your min value, put in your max value, and then put in any other value you want. And it's automatically going to calculate how filled in the waffle chart should be. The nice thing about this as well is that if you update this to have it not be a percentage, maybe you want to have more than a hundred little dots on it. You want to have a thousand or you want to have 10 you're still going to be able to, you know, drop something in and have it plot correctly. You can add in more than two series as well. If you want to break something into categories, that's a possibility. If you want to adjust the size of these, you're going to find as you scale it down, whoop, everything overlaps and starts looking bad. So we fix that by changing our marker size. So in this case, our marker, we've just decreased the size to be about half of what it is before, and it all looks right. It's also going to be important that you make this a square, because if it's not a square, everything it's going to overlap or you're going to have inconsistent spacing in between the sections. The other thing that you can do with this concept is do something like a different layout. So if we wanted to just have 10 little squares or 10 little circles going across filled in as they go, we use the exact same concept, but instead we just use 10 positions. So these are all on the same Y value and the only difference is the X value changes. Uh, you And of course, in this case, we've changed the marker to a circle instead of it being a square. So for my data folks who want to kind of dig into how this all works, the basic process is this. We're just calculating the percentage progress over here. So your min value and max value, and then your actual values you want to plot. And the calculation is, uh, if you want to grab that, that's in the template. Now for our actual table, we're starting with our X and Y coordinate for all 100 values. So when you look at this, it's gonna be one through 10, and then one through 10, repeated over and over again, then one through 10, repeated over and over again. That's the basic concept because we're trying to fill it in as we go, row by row. But then we have our actual value. So how do we figure out how many of these to plot? Because unless it's at 100%, we're not gonna be plotting all of them, right? So you're gonna have a lot of zeros down here. So then we also have the scale. This is just one through 100. This is basically the fill order in which we want our scatter plot to be plotted. So I'm going from bottom, filling in left to right, row by row going up. How does this calculation work? To actually figure out how much we fill in, we're gonna say if G7, which is our scale, is greater than F2, which is our actual value as a whole number, not as a percentage, drop it in as zero. If not, go over and just grab our little value, that Y coordinate or that X coordinate. So it's essentially what we're saying here is for all of our X and Y values from one to 100 is less than our actual value, plot it. If it's more than our actual value, just put in a zero. That's basically what we're doing here. I hope I explained that okay. I always have a little bit of trouble explaining the, let me know if you have questions. We've then done the same thing here for that single line chart. So if you just wanted to have like a little series of dots being filled in like this, how we've done that is we've just done the same thing, but our Y value is always one because it's all on the same level. Our X values are all we're plotting. So we just done the same thing with our X values saying, hey, check the value against the count 
and use that. So I'm sending this out on the newsletter tomorrow on Tuesday. So if you want a copy of it, you can get it there. Uh, if you're watching this, you're probably watching it on the newsletter is my guess. If you want to get more templates like this, go hop on the newsletter. It's free. I literally just send out free templates in every newsletter. That's all we do there. Let me know if you have questions. Let me know if you want me to dig into anything else. Thanks so much, folks. Have a good one. Bye for now.